Next speaker, who is Alexandre Roman, to talk about the massive stars in DSS uh, of the survey. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for receiving me and by the opportunity to show a uh, piece of our, our, our job, our work with, uh, with Apogee and, and in particular for uh, uh, Massive Stars. Uh, I, I will go straight to, to, to give you a glimpse of what is the spectrograph. It's uh, uh, Apogee is a multi-fiber spectrograph. You can see here on the on the left, the uh, this is Apogee uh, two, the Southern spectrograph. Uh, when we are working on the final integration of this uh, this uh, instrument, you have a glimpse on, on the fibers, the, the way that they organize it. Then here we can see the the, the way that the, 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 the we work with this is uh, so we have basically we have a plate. If you take a look on the right. This is uh, a plate with the field of view here. Each, each hole is, uh, is filled by a fiber, correspond to a target. And then we have this cartridge that uh, 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 make possible to connect the field of view with the fibers that will uh, uh, deliver the light to the uh, spectrograph. And in case of the uh, DuPont telescope, uh, you have the Cassegrain, uh, Cassegrain. Uh, so basically, this uh, stuff here in the right is the adapter, because the uh, telescope wasn't uh, optimized for, for for this facility, and then uh, the team had to, to work on a system that could combine both uh, both systems. Uh, Apogee uh, has been covering this uh, nowadays by uh, cover both hemispheres. Of course, the northern uh, hemisphere is more covered than the south. Uh, here we have the, uh, the, the, the magnetic clouds. We have the disk, we have the bulge, we have the capillary field, that's a very important uh, uh, part of the survey. Basically, uh, in, in the case, Apogee works on bright time uh, uh, of the collaboration. Uh, it started on the fall of 2014, and it is uh, planning to end by the fall of 2020. Uh, it's a 300 fibers, uh, and in the case of the north, it covers seven uh, square degrees, and the south, three and a half square degrees in, in Las Campanas. Uh, the wavelength coverage is, is between 1.5 1.7 micrometers with a mean resolution of 22,000. Mm. And uh, uh, nowadays we uh, have more or less uh, 300,000 stars with uh, signal to mass uh, higher than 100. And for uh, giants, uh, the velocity precision, the radio velocity precision is almost. Uh, 100 meters, and in some kind of cases, even less. <clears throat> Just uh, the main survey, uh, one of the goals is to, to have this abundance precision as of, of about 0.1 dex for at least 15 elements. OK. Um, why to study massive stars? Uh, well, we know that uh, that kind of stars are uh, very important. Uh, elements or um, for the life, life cycle of the not, not only the stars but the matter uh, uh, in the galaxy in the universe uh, and uh, they are so important to understand the formation and evolution of our own galaxy. Um, UK is very important because it's our own home in the universe and if you if you want to understand galaxies as a whole we need to study our own galaxy because the, it is the, the in some ways, the uh, best example that we have in to studying details. Uh, here, I present a sketch on the okay, we have uh, molecular uh, gas and clothes uh, formation of new stars. The stars evolve, uh, eventually explodes, and uh, a supernova, the ejecta contribute to range reach the interstellar medium, and so on. 
Uh, also, massive stars are key actors in, in energy balance of the galaxy. So, if you uh, want to understand our galaxy, you need to understand how these beasts interact with the matter. Uh, but on the other hand, those stars are extremely rare and difficult to find. This is a quite different uh, scenario for uh, low, low mass stars. These stars are also key uh, actors in the, uh, synthesis, uh, the synthesis of the heavy elements and chemical enrichment of the SM. Um, also, they are, uh, we believe that they are, they are tight connected with the, the molecular clothes in which they are formed. Um, and in this case, uh, such uh, uh, actors can be traced by uh, the associate molecular emission, like, uh, for example, using CS and CO lines at radio frequencies. Uh, here, here, how, how, how uh, do we propose to use Apogee? And, uh, okay, I, I gave you an idea of why we, we want to study uh, OB stars. You have a glimpse of um, an idea of a sketch of, of the Milky Way structure. And uh, the idea was uh, when I first faced uh, Apogee and the idea of the surveys, okay, uh, I have been explaining a lot of time, uh, of telescope on my own time, uh, trying to uh, confirm that my targets, my candidates are really all stars. It's very time consuming when you go to a, a telescope like SOAR using a single uh, slit uh, spectrograph. In a good night, if you are lucky, you can, let's say, confirm about 20 or 25 targets. Entire night. Of, I'm, I'm talking about up to 12 or 14 hours night in the near infrared. On the other hand, with Apogee, a 300 fibers, in one hour, I can reach almost 270 sources of timing. And that makes me think about, okay, I would like to have this kind of uh, stuff on my hand. But, uh, and of course, if you go to the near infrared, I, I, here I, I advance a bit. So here you have the uh, Borisova field of view. So the, the paper that uh, we published recently. So we are looking through this direction of the galaxy. Recently, we published another one in which we are looking through the Purcell arms in this direction. Now you will to show you something uh, that we have been doing uh, in the direction of the energy C3603 and, and other systems. But the point is, if you could combine the large number of targets in one shot, Plus the uh, advantage to observe in the near infrared, we could do good stuff. We could, we could do that. Yeah. And, uh, but the first challenge was uh, people doesn't believe at that time that uh, Apogee could be used for, to study massive stars because the, the spectrograph was considered to study giants, not, not uh, all, all uh, the stars. Then the first task uh, we, we had to, to, to do was, okay, let's see how uh, the stars look uh, through the uh, Apogee eyes. And here we have the, uh, 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 from M uh, dwarfs to K, J, F, A, B, and to B0. So we can clearly see that, okay, uh, once the temperature rises, the metallic lines vanishes. And then we have a, a more or less clean spectrum here, here, here. And when you go further, uh, looking to all stars, we can see that, okay, we must have uh, the hydrogen lines. Uh, here we have the bracket 15, bracket 13, bracket 11, and also two very valuable avion two lines here and here. This one has DIVs, so don't pay attention to it. <laughs> so, um, for the first time, you, we show that it's possible to recognize uh, O and B stars using Apogee. This was very important because uh, 
from that point, we we uh, convinced people into, in, into the collaboration that would be worse to to provide us some time to 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 make our science. Okay. Uh, we made an analysis of uh, based on the equipment with of the uh, hydrogen lines, and we saw this interesting uh, relationship between basic temperature and uh, equivalent line width. Uh, we see that there is a, more or less a, a linear relation between uh, the, uh, around those all six, uh, perhaps less or more, more or less in this until. B3, B4. I, I couldn't go, we couldn't go deeper at this time because our sample didn't reach this, uh, this part of the temperature range. Also, we could, uh, we can uh, separate all, all stars from B stars using some criteria, et cetera, et cetera. But the, the point is, we, we successfully showed that, okay, it's possible to use Apogee to do more than just identify all stars, all of these stars. We can separate them. Too. Uh, we can even be, do better, uh, for example, separating the giants and supergiants from the class four, class five, and the bars. And also, we can separate the B stars, the normal B stars, the class five, from the supergiants, and so on, just using the, the parameters that we can reach using Apogee. We can uh, estimate temperatures using the lines or spectral types. Okay, once we have this in hands, we propose a, a pilot uh, into the, to the collaboration. And the region we choose was W3, W5, uh, W4, W5. This is in Purcell Warm. And uh, it's a very convenient uh, direction because uh, at this direction, we are mostly seeing the arm in which uh, what seems to be at, we are perpendicular. We are seeing this arm in a perpendicular way. So, um, this, is, this is an interesting configuration because we can have a, this picture of it. And uh, of course, here we have much more uh, 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 flavors than just all of these stars because this was at the that time that we proposed this. People, okay, people were convinced that, okay, you can uh, study all, all stars, but we also have people that want to use the same study in this direction, the YSOs and other kind of objects. So we, we just made a joint uh, proposal and then um, did it. Okay. Um, let's see if you have any other comments here. No, it's okay. And then the, the next step was to apply. But once we got the, the the, the data is actually we got uh, 13 visits um, uh, and, and two plates, but we uh, slide the different configuration because uh, one problem that we have is the size of the angular size of the fiber. So if you have two stars that are closer than something like 48 seconds, or more or less, you need to in order to reach two stars that are closer than this, you need to have more than one configuration. So you choose in one configuration, you choose one star, and then the other plate, you just skip the one and, and, and then use the other. So you can reach the star that are. Uh, and then we did this. We got almost 100 feet uh, spectrum for, 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 for this entire uh, star from division. Here I am showing the uh, um, the diagram that, that enables us to separate um, the old stars uh, in, in terms of uh, luminosity classes, and also have a glimpse on the on the on idea on the uh, if you have, they are uh, we are very certain that they are old stars, or we have a, a green uh, a, a gray area here in, in which you can have the late latest old or very early B stars. Uh, but um, so this is what we got for W3, W4, W5. The red uh, circles are the, uh, um, if I'm not wrong, the, the no old stars, and the yellow uh, uh, um, circles correspond to the new uh, old stars. We got we have 60 old stars 
all in early, very early V stars in this sketch. And uh, but um, this are, those are the data, the spectra for the six all stars. This this uh, the sample was published recently, uh, from which forty seven new findings. Uh, we clearly see here the. I don't know if you this give us uh, the Indian lines, the bracket lines. It was amazing because for the first time I, we've uh, a decent amount of telescope time, we were able to reach a lot of uh, uh, of uh, positives. Okay, but we're at the, this time we're still a bit skeptical about our method. So we combine it for some for some uh, uh, candidates. We also got optical spectra from using some Pedro Martyr, so a shell covering most of the optical from three three thousand fifty hundred to seven thousand, and uh, we are very happy because all of our, our stars are really old stars. Uh, so, once we did this, uh, okay, this is uh, one. We also uh, were interested to to know about the how good will be our near infrared classification against the optical. So here we have the optical uh, result. Of course, from optical we have <coughs> we, we we are able to go deeper and and have details like the. If the star is of a Z type or or so on, but uh, the main uh, the main point here that the interest is is the spectral type itself, and we can see that uh, uh, the results that we obtain is plus minus one uh, subtype, so it's 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 very decent. So it's it's much more than I expected in the beginning. So I, uh, when I began this, I, went, I just wanted to, okay, if I go for a bunch of sources in my pocket, the telescope and ask for telescope time, can I successfully confirm that they are, they look like O or B stars? Because if I, for let's say a, a thousand candidates I have in my pocket, a hundred confirmed, like, then I can move, I could move to another facility and do the job. But, we can do even better. That's that's nice. Uh, we also took the uh, here on on, on on take a look on, on theoretical model because we have this empirical. Thank you, sir. We we have this empirical uh, relationship, and I was curious about okay, can we re reproduce this from theoretical models? And uh, for these, we got CMFGN CMFGN uh, state of art code from uh, from here. We applied the, the theoretical models uh, using the parsec evolu evolutionary tracks uh, um, parameters as input, and uh, apply this for for a range of 10 to 50 solar mass stars, and uh, we include uh, some uh, um, uh, let's say improvements on using the, the cold, and this is what we got. And the, in the left, we have the optical theoretical sequence and at the uh, to the right we have the uh, near infrared apogee near infrared uh, theoretical uh, sequence we clearly see that the, we have here the helium lines here and here so here we can see the temperature scale the equivalent uh, um, spectrotype here we have the, the lines and then we um, uh, we perform the measurements of this uh, uh, the line parameters for the correct spectra, and we compare it with the data, with the empirical data. So we can see here the relationship between if you're going to read it and the spectral type or uh, or sample, the, the, the paper one. So the, in blue, we have the orbiting plates, and in, 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 in yellow, we have the results from the uh, models. And uh, so we are happy with what, so we, we are, in some way, we are in the, in the right direction, so. And uh, 
that's it. The uh, my last two uh, slides are. This was actually the the um, ah the spectra that I show you. Uh, I, actually, I didn't show you what we show here. Um, this is the original project that I uh, uh, submitted to same talk, asking for time, but in a different way in Chile. Okay, and uh, the idea is to cover all this uh, huge uh, range of star forming visions. It's actually the the VVVX. Okay, uh, the talk at that time was a bit skeptical, but they they gave me time to 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 do at least one of this, and uh, we did it. And the paper is already submitted. <laughs> Don't think knows about that. And uh, we got this is in the to the right is the results. In the blue, light blue, have the all stars, and the pink are the super giants. Uh, we have both yellow super giants, uh, blue super giants, B stars. The funny thing is, the all stars are the majority. <laughs> But this is not that surprising because our as our uh, method was to is is defined by a cut in, in magnitudes and then we are looking through an spiral worm that that's kind of expected thing. So, but I am happy <laughs> anyways. And um, 165 of the uh, super giants and that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Time for questions. I have one. So it's like connected to the next station. So those uh, blue stars, they can be used to them in these times. So have you thought about using them? So I know that people from UH, they've uh, established a method to use the spectra that you can fit in. So they're using face wind, but you are using ZFJ, it's the same. So have you thought about using these obvious stars to fit them in the spiral structures of the Milky Way? That's right. They were, I, I just had had no time or next space <laughs> okay. to show it, but we, we we actually in the paper we we do a shot with Gaia. So we attack this uh, subject from from the easy easiest way because the Gaia is already published. We have a catalog with distance. Yeah, that's right. But you can uh, you can do what I mean. Because you look further, and then that kind of provide a promotion for you know for the people. What I can what I can tell you from our results is we have when you look through the uh, this arm, we have uh, from isograms because we have distance, we have three main uh, peaks. The most pronounced one is one associated with NGC thirty six or three. It's almost seven point five to eight kiloparsec. But we have another one around nine kiloparsec. And surprisingly for me, we have a, a, well, not that surprising because NGC 3576 is in front of NGC 3603. It's about two kiloparts in front of us. But you were right, we have plenty of options and we are, we are going to store every, every, every one.